Yeah, well, I mean, that, that wasn't the point. I know we were discussing the Mino over two streams, but the whole point wasn't to go through the whole Mino. It was just to oh. tie off our conversations about um, heuristic and dialectic and, uh, you know, wh whether you're being monological or uh, dialogical and all that sort of thing. Hopefully, through watching these streams, you've at least somewhat realised that there is... A better way to approach conversations um i know that for a lot of our viewers whether they're on the live stream or they're the ones that um watch afterwards we're pretty much preaching to the choir because yeah. the reason that they're here with us is because they have engaged with us in this in this way where even if we don't necessarily agree with each other um we've had a good conversation and We've had a, a pleasant agree to disagree versus a violent disagree agreement, you know. Um, so hopefully there are a couple of people who pick up on this and think about the way they're approaching their conversations and everything like that. And they can they can actually go, OK, yeah, perhaps in the future, maybe when I sit down and have a conversation, I will take. Uh, the position that even though I'm very confident in this topic, I might not know everything about it. And when I'm having a discussion with a partner, I'm not going to defend a position. I'm not going to attack their position. What I'm going to do is ask them what they know about it and then ask them questions about it. And, you know, as calmly as I can go, well, can you explain this bit to me? But doesn't this bit seem to contradict that bit i don't understand and just have a proper decent conversation search for that truth and be aware that actually you might not know everything you thought you know and your opinion might change on it or the pair of you might go fuck neither of us know about enough about this conversation or this topic to actually continue we should both look into it more and continue this conversation another day. And that's perfectly fine. I think there's something very virtuous about being able to admit that you don't know. Yeah, exactly. And I think you've sort of hit the nail on the head with if you go into every conversation thinking that you know everything or, you know, you can't be wrong about a certain thing, then you're you're never leaving yourself open to learn anything. You're you always assume that you're there to teach the other person. Mm. And there's a popular saying in the atheist community that I'm never certain of anything. I, I don't have any absolute certainties, but yet they mostly enter most conversations absolutely certain that they're the ones that know what they're talking about. <laughs> That's very true, especially when it comes down to the conversations that keep popping up of definition of atheism and subjective morality and, all that sort of thing. And you're just like, and again, when someone is a hundred percent certain like that, it is like talking to a brick wall. It's really hard to break that person down. Um, and I don't mean break them down in the sense that you're trying to make them wilt and be that, but I mean, break down the wall that's surrounding them so that you can actually have that decent conversation with them. Um, uh, as Leon says, she doesn't like uh, debating. I prefer discussions where we exchange info and opinions more than anything. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, there, there's, definitely. Uh, there's nothing wrong with putting in our own um, our own opinion and beliefs and and things like that into the conversation. Of course, I mean, well, I think it's like this, but, you know, I, I'm still looking for more information. Maybe you can show me where this is wrong. You know, you can put, you phrase it that way. You're having a conversation. Show me where I'm wrong. That's a great way to get someone at least more interested in the conversation, I find. If you go, look, this is, this is my current position. I'm not too um, firm in this position. Um, uh, sorry, Leon. Uh, I, I do apologize. Um, it, I, <laughs> uh, nice to meet you, dude. <laughs> Are you misgendering people? I, I am. I, I do apologize. Um, I, I'm, yeah. They, I'm going to just call yeah, everyone. They, I'm just going to call everyone. They, do. yeah. Uh, I have been really good at doing it recently on stream. I've been very conscious with doing it. And something in my brain uh, <laughs> is, you know, uh, 
I, I must admit, though, you've got very pretty eyes and eye makeup. So uh, it's probably what led me down down that path. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so as I was saying, there's nothing wrong with putting something into yourself and asking someone, well, show me where I'm wrong, because we're of a different position to show me why you think I'm wrong. And if they start down that path of, well, I'm just not convinced by it, you're like, okay, but what isn't convincing you? What is making you think that this position is wrong? Because if you're convinced that this position is wrong, then help me be convinced that this position is wrong. Just don't think it's strong. And that's one of the times when you go, okay, well, I'm looking to have a conversation. You're saying that I'm wrong, but you're not able to explain why I'm wrong. So how do you know I'm wrong? <laughs> it, this is why discussions about epistemic responsibility and epistemic justification are important. They really are. And I wish more people would take the time to actually understand them. Um, and I'm not saying that you have to be perfect um, and that your justifications have to be absolutely amazing and out of this world and Nobel Prize winning. I, we're all just humans at the end of the day. Yeah. But you just need to look into things and be able to give a half decent justification for your position, whatever it is. Whether even if it's a lack belief position, you know, well, why do you lack belief? I'm not convinced. Okay, so what about this information isn't convincing? Not evidence. Well, it is evidence because evidence is indica indicative. So um, it, even if you don't find it strong or convincing, what about it do you find unconvincing? You know, start small, build up. It can be really hard though, because as we've discussed many, 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 many times, is that people are more into a fight than actually having a discussion. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. And I understand the mentality as well. I've been there. You know, especially when I first got into the online debate world. And I suppose there almost is a bit of a, a rush at that smack down comment where you've completely thwarted someone else's argument but it hasn't actually got anyone anywhere all you've got is you feel good i guess so you do feel good for winning and you might have your peers patting you on the back but you haven't actually made an effective change and in some respects you've probably pushed the person that you're having the dialogue with further into their own position by the way you've conducted yourself and people who might have been watching it that might have been on the fence from the way you've conducted yourself might have actually sided with the other person and gone that way just because you've been a bit of a dick uh, or a bit too arrogant in the way that you've presented yourself you know what you thought was a smackdown has actually turned into something where you've made people feel rejected and like we were discussing in the article of the psychology of rejection when people feel rejected it tends to reaffirm their position they sink back into their in-group and they have that reaffirmed there and they all talk about how oh well i don't want to be that type of person they're that, that type of person they're all dickheads so I have demonstrated the negative behaviours that I've spent a lot of time trying to convince others not to do. I'm not telling you that I am better than you in any way, shape or form. What I can tell you is I have fucked up a lot and I want to help people realise where they're fucking up to. And I want people to help me realise where I'm fucking up. He's brilliant at that. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's why I studied, you know. <laughs> and that's why we do the stream, so I can continue to be yeah. pointed out where I'm fucking up. <laughs> <laughs> I need to be pointed out on occasion as well. So. Yeah. Going back to the whole you don't have to know everything, I've got that degree and I still need to look stuff up. So, you know, there's no, there's nothing bad in saying, well, okay, I might know this bit, but... You'll have to give me a bit of time. I need to go off and learn this bit. Or if somebody says something that you're pretty certain you know of, um, but they've said something different and you think, well, they seem to know what they're talking about. I have good reason to think they might know what they're talking about. Maybe I should go up and look this up and then come back to the conversation.